Hey guys, welcome back to SIS2003. Today we're going to go over arrays, data manipulation, and the XB encoding. Okay, first of all, let's start with DB and DW. What does DB do? What does DW do? Well, it actually assigns a value to your variable is the best way to think about it. So, for all of these, your variable goes here and your value goes here. So, let's call this variable I don't know what that's supposed to be, double N. So if you were to say DB, you'd give it a space of one byte. If you said DW, you'd give it two bytes worth of space. So if you said five, you'd give the value I don't know, five. All right, sweet. What's the difference between DB, DW with RMB and RMW? Well, in DB and DW, actually give it a value whereas in RMB and RMW, you reserve a memory byte or reserve a byte or reserve two bytes, depending on what you want. So, for example, if we have the variable hello, because I'm very, very creative, and you, wanna, you want to reserve I don't know, 14 bytes, you can just write 14 here, and it will allocate 14 bytes like that. But in your memory addresses over there, you'll actually you won't have anything in there. Where if you did db at I don't know, where whatever value that is, you'll have a five in there. But for hello, they'll be empty. All right. So how do you fill those values? Well, you can use this super awesome command that's called fill. Now, again, your variable name. Let's call this an array. Okay, and you need two values here. One of the values is how many bytes or how many spaces you want to be filled, and the other is with what value. So if I want 100 values to be filled with um, <coughs> with this value, it's okay, I'll just make a difference. So this is number of bytes to be filled, number to be numbers to be filled, and this will be what you want in the memory, what you want in each location, in each location. And that's um, number of numbers? Yeah, sure, number of numbers. <laughs> that's, I'm just going to use that because I can't write. All right, and that's pretty much the syntax and what they do. So next we have our multiplication and division. All right. So well, let's go with multiplication first. Emol is unsigned 16 by 16 multiplication. So what happens, you take the register D, multiply it with the register Y, and your answer will go like that. Same thing for emols and same thing for multiplication. Now, let's do 2 times 7, all right? So since they're 8 bits, let's look at these guys, all right? So I put 2 in A, I put 7 in B. When I use multiply, I'll get 2 times 7 is 14, 14 in B. Well, kind of, you'll get A, B, C, D, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You'll get E in B. Sweet. That was pretty simple. All right, well, what if we do division? Let's take a look at division. There's e divs, all the ones over here. Let's do the un let's do the unsigned 16 by 16. So you need something in D. So let's go ahead and just move that over there. So let's load something in D. Let's load the number 100 in D. And then let's load the number ldx99 in x. Let's just make hashtags. <clears throat> so as you can see here, I need something in d and I need something in x. Where you're, we're trying to see how many times x can go into d. Your remainder will go to d. So 100 divided by 99 is 1, remainder 1. Actually, let's make it 98 so you, can, you guys can tell the difference. So it'll be 1, remainder 2. So it says the remainder goes to D, so D will have a value of 2, which means 
x will have the other value, which in this case would be 1. And that pretty much is the multiplication division summarized. Next we have the xb. If you were in a class, this might have confused you. But in some encodings, it will be like i, i, x, b, blah, 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 blah. Or I guess like 86. So what you would do is write 86. You'd write your memory location or whatever in here. So I don't know, 4, 3, 4, 0, or 0. This is random numbers, no significance. But what's the XB? All right. So this XB is actually a way to specify which register you want. So there you have X, Y, PC, and SP. These might be in the wrong order, but this is just more for conceptual sake. So and these have an encoding of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. They progress by, uh, binomially up. Sorry, binarily up, not binomially. I don't even know if binary is a word, but we're going to go with it. So let's say you want to change x. The way you tell your computer x is you use these two for your xb, so 0, 0. If you, if you wanted y, you'd make it 0, y. If you wanted pc, you'd do 1, 0, and sp, 1, 1. Getting back to arrays, let's talk about addressing them and how to find the address. <laughs> Dear God, that's supposed to say address. Okay. So, let's say you have an array of 10 places. In the memory wrap, it'll look something like this. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nah, I don't care if that's 10 or not. Anyways, and let's say your array starts at 800. How do you get to this place over here. Let's say 800, again, it's arbitrary number, 815. Well, obviously, you can, one way is just to go straight to 815, but that's not what we want to do. We want to displace it from the start of the array. So, or the effective address would be your start of the array plus your offset. But how do you find out your offset? Well, there's two ways of doing it. First, the index, right? You want to be, let's say you were trying to find an index 10. So you need the index, and you actually need to multiply by something. What you have to multiply it by is how big the, the contents are. So for example, if it's a byte, or is it two bytes, is it three bytes? So the offset is actually index times your how big you are, or how much space you take. So let's go with space. And that is how you get the effective address with these guys. All right, great, and you found the effective address. Now what? How do I put it into memory? Well, use a index, uh, we sorry, use the address mode called index addressing. Now, this might look scary, but it's really not. All this is saying is 70 plus x. So you're going to add these two together, and x will have a value. This is your register x, not the variable x, because that would be xx if you were to watch last week's video. But this is the register x, register. So you take the address that the register holds, let's say it's 800, and then you add 70 to it. You go to the memory address, and you get the contents. Ooh, memory. You grab the contents, your little hand. Yeah, that's my hand. 40. You swipe this guy, and you put into A. A now has 40. Sweet. All right, now what if I want to store something at a certain index? Well, you use the store command, and it's the exact same way, but opposite. So you, you take what's in A, you add these two, and you grab it from A and put it into the combination of x plus 100. All right, let's just do a quickie on the 2D arrays. All right, make a 2D array is simple. You know, we'll just make five columns. Yeah, that's a five, not an S. Five and three rows. Yeah, that's awesome. Good. No, 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 no. In assembly, there's no such thing as 2D arrays. You can have a really big 1D array. What I mean by that is, let's say you want to erase that. Let's say you wanted an array that has, I don't forget, but let's say five rows and three columns. All right. In the memory map, it's not, you're not going to have little boxes like this, you know? You're not going to have that. You're just going to have a really long with a bunch of memory spaces. You're going to have that. So the way it actually does it, so let's say you had 1, 3, 1, 2, 4, 2. It'd be 1, 3, 1, 2, 4, 2. And assembly doesn't know rows and columns. Instead, it just places them vertically down a memory map. 
So how do you make an array that's five rows and three columns? Well, it's the same way of making an array that has a size of 15, because assembly has 1D arrays. So how do you make a 2D array? Well, you make a 1D array, but you as a programmer need to know how to index as if it's a 2D array. Now, if you guys already, if you guys haven't done the lab yet, I highly suggest finding out the equation by yourself. But if you already did and you're pulling out your hair, stop pulling it out, it's really bad for you. Other than that, here's the equation. So, remember, effective addressing, you need to have the base or where the array starts. And the equation is your row index times your row size plus your column index. And then you have to multiply it by the type, depending if it's a byte or a word. For simplicity's sake, we're going to say that this one's a byte. So let's try to find the circled one's address. Well, the base, we'll just keep it as base because I don't really set it plus your row, so that'd be two. Your row size, well, how many other? One, two, three, four, five. There's about five of them. Well, not about five, but you know what I mean. And then you're going to add the column index, which is three. And you're gonna multiply by one, because byte, and this will give you 13. All right, well, is it, is it was that lucky? Well, let's try another one, let's try, let's try that. So how, what do you do? You do two times five plus one, which will give you 11 without fail. All right, cool. Easy peasy. Well, do you guys want to do a quick example of a 2D array? Okay, I'm going to assume the array is already initialized and everything. So, it's not, it's the same thing as putting into a one-dimensional array. You, know, you have to load something into A, and you have to store something, and then you're going to store it in the memory, and you're going to have this. The only thing different from a 2D and 1D array is how you get this number. So, that's far as coding it goes. All right, guys, this summarizes the our week, and I hope to see you guys next week. See ya.